Welcome back, everyone. We have an update from Odyssey Marine Exploration. Trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol OMEX. It's an ocean explorer committed to sustainable and responsible discovery, validation, and advancement of seafloor critical mineral projects, including polymetallic nodules for battery metals and subsea phosphate deposits for fertilizers. Happy to welcome back Chairman and CEO Mark Gordon. Welcome back, Mark. Uh, great to be here with you. It's always fun. So uh, we'll get right into it today. The um, uh, standard forward-looking statements will apply to my presentation. So let's get into the presentation. A lot of positive change since I was here last time. I guess it was only a couple of months ago, but a lot has cha changed for the better since we last spoke. Uh, at both the macro level for the industry as well as at the Odyssey uh, company level. So at the macro level, a lot of U.S. policy shifts and investments in the sector have come out in the past two months, and that's driving a huge opportunity in the industry. Odyssey's um, one of only two ways uh, that investors can play uh, this investment opportunity in U.S. listed companies. Uh, we're well positioned. We've spent the past 15 years studying where the best seafloor mineral opportunities would be around the world and uh, have built a diversified portfolio of projects that give us diversification from both commodity risk and geopolitical risk. Having operated in the deep ocean environment for over 30 years now, uh, we really understand how to complete these projects successfully. And as part of that, we've really learned how to navigate the regulatory landscape that will guide who's gonna be most successful in bringing these projects into production. At the company level, huge balance sheet improvement since we last spoke. Uh, some of our largest long-term investors have executed outstanding options and warrants, bringing in over $8 million of working capital. Um, that'll fund operations, base operations, well into next year. Uh, also, uh, some of those same investors and other uh, debt providers have converted over $9.5 million of debt since we last spoke. Uh, reducing our outstanding debt by over 53%. So I think an important takeaway here is you see some of our largest long-term investors increasing uh, their bet on Odyssey. And I think that's a tribute uh, to them seeing how we're executing, uh, but also uh, this macro environment, how positively it's changing for investors. The other thing I'd note um, is that our partner in our Mexico project, which I'll talk about in, in a second, um, is not only really excited about that project, he's now become one of the largest shareholders in Odyssey. So I think you see, um, I'm going to say, a lot of smart money uh, increasing their exposure uh, since we last spoke. So I mentioned this, the uh, U.S. policy shift. In April, President Trump issued an executive order uh, that really focused our government on advancing the acquisition of critical minerals from all sources, including seafloor. Um, there's been some significant movement in that space. Over a billion dollars is proposed in federal funding to accelerate this effort. Uh, a recent example for uh, those of you that may have been following this is MP Materials. Uh, that's a rare earth player in the U.S. that just received a $400 million direct investment from DOD and some really valuable offtake agreements. And I think we're going to see more of those deals out there. Odyssey's team in Washington uh, is focused on making sure that Odyssey is well positioned uh, for those opportunities. Now, I mentioned over the past 15 years, we've studied where the best mineral opportunities are around the world, and some of them are right here in U.S. controlled waters. But frankly, until this policy shift took place, Odyssey wasn't really incented to bring these projects forward. Well, that's changed now. So uh, stay tuned, but I think you'll see some activity from us in this realm. Uh, now that this positive policy shift has uh, gone on. Odyssey had the foresight uh, over four years ago now uh, to get qualified as a BOEM uh, contractor. BOEM is the Bureau of Energy Management. That's the U.S. government agency that uh, uh, regulates who gets mining rights in U.S. waters. So we're well positioned uh, for uh, what's happened here in the past couple of months. Uh, I mentioned, you know, there's a momentum shift around the world as well. Cook Islands is a great example. Uh, the photo here, uh, is, the gentleman in the suit is David Copley. 
He's Trump's senior critical mineral advisor in the White House. He went to the Cook Islands, and the U.S. government signed a deal just two weeks ago now with the Cook Islands, a cooperative agreement around uh, the seafloor uh, minerals there. Uh, there are polymetallic nodules. There's estimated to be 12 billion wet tons of nodules in the Cook Islands waters. Uh, Odyssey's had a longstanding relationship. We've worked with the government for for more than 12 years now as they develop their regulatory regime. We have investments in two out of the three license holders currently in the Cook Islands, and we have most of our is super sophisticated deep ocean equipment stationed and working in the Cook Islands right now. So our timing couldn't have been better uh, here as well um, that this announcement has just been made. So um, I'll kind of wind down with, you know, what's the investment opportunity uh, right now for investors? And I think that's going to be the delta or the arbitrage between what the potential value of our projects will be worth and what our current market cap is. So Fosigmex, this is, by the way, this is only three of our projects. We have other projects in development. I'm just highlighting our top three right now. Uh, Fosigmex is our Mexican phosphate project. This project could uh, resolve, will, would resolve uh, Mexico's food security issues, but also food security issues throughout the Americas and elsewhere. So this is really a strategically important project. We have the absolute right partner. Um, our partner is a major player in the Mexican ag industry. Uh, the government relies on him as an advisor uh, because of his experience. Odyssey owns 35% of this entity. and. Um, I expect that uh, once the uh, summer break has uh, finished for governments around the world, including in Mexico, uh, we'll have some significant movement in advancing this project. And uh, you should look forward to reports that, that I hope we'll be issuing uh, this fall about how progress is being made on that project. Um, I mentioned a couple of times now, we have investments in two of the three license holders in the Cook Islands. OML, we own 7% of. OML recently got a JORC uh, report. That's an independent valuation of the size and quality of their mineral resource. And OML has issued a $4.7 billion valuation as a result of that independent report. CIC um, has not issued uh, their uh, resource estimate. We're using the same valuation for CIC, but CIC, I think that's a conservative estimate to use because they have the adjacent license area. So the mineralogy is exactly the same. Uh, and CIC has an area that's 10 times the size of OML, but we're just using the same valuation. So that's not a number uh, provided by CIC, but that's the explanation of why we used it. You run the numbers here, you have a range of 700 million to 1.4 billion just between these three projects. And um, you know, even if you discount the low end of the range, it's pretty obviously that's a, pretty obvious that that's a huge multiple of our current market cap. So I'll stop there, and we can go to questions uh, if you'd like. Okay, Mark, thank you so much. Yes, so. Um, some investors may still see ocean minerals as a distant concept, but in the U.S., it seems the government is moving pretty quickly, shifting from policy intent to tangible action. Um, so talk about how this acceleration is creating real near-term opportunities for companies like Odyssey. Uh, yeah, well, it's a really good question, and it sort of I've touched on that, I guess, a couple of times. The, the government is changing policy, which is significant. Uh, to really encourage companies like Odyssey to invest uh, in projects here in the U.S. and abroad, like the Cook Islands, and they're voting with their wallets. You look at that MP deal; they just put four hundred DoD just put four hundred million dollars in a direct equity investment into a U.S. company, and I think you're going to see more transactions like that. And Odyssey's tra chasing those transactions, so we hope to be the beneficiary of similar programs. Perfect. On um, one second, I lost my spot. There we go. And you mentioned there are only a handful of ways for investors to access the space, and the metals company often comes up. So expand on how Odyssey differs and what sets you apart from an investment opportunity. Yeah. So uh, look, the metals company TMC trades in the U.S. It's the other U.S. pure play company. 
Um, we, we have a great amount of respect for them, uh, good relationships with their management. Um, I think the main difference uh, in our strategy is um, to date, TMC is really focused on polymetallic nodules only and in the area of the ocean that to date has been regulated by the United Nations, but may now soon be regulated uh, by the U.S., another important policy shift. Uh, by contrast, Odyssey has built um, smaller ownership positions in a number of different projects. I think that's probably the major uh, difference between the two of us, that we're spreading our bet a little bit more. I, I think, you know, both are great companies to invest in. In fact, I'm an investor in TMC personally. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you for this update, Mark. We appreciate it. Exciting time in your realm. And uh, we look to see you again real soon. Great. Great to be with you again. Awesome. Okay, everyone, we'll be right back.